I'd like to welcome everyone in this room. Uh, some traveled from very far, so welcome here today. I'm very excited for the diversity we have in uh, this group, from startups, youth, well-established corporates, um, innovators, educators, NGOs, um, associations, um, designers, creatives, they're all here. So I'm very, very excited that we all have the opportunity to share and exchange uh, ideas that are there and we didn't know of. Um, I do, I'm going to go and invite you and want to make a statement for today, uh, as this is our eighth uh, conference. And I think it's good to be starting with some consciousness. So the question for today is, can we reshape our world? Um, what does it actually mean, circularity? And that starts with the question, who are you? Who are we? And that question will lead to how we act. So there is, according to a very um, interesting ecologist, there are four ways to look at your relationship with nature. So who are you um, in relationship to nature actually defines how you behave. I had a slide, I'm not sure if it's being pulled up, but I can do it also orally. There's four options. And I would like you to consider who and what resonates with you. Are you the one mastering nature? That's the first attitude and relationship we have towards nature. Are you mastering nature? The attitude of human supremacy on earth. Are we humans stewards of the earth? Nature is a vulnerable system for which we are responsible and human stands above nature and this brings privileges but also duties. Is that what you are, a steward of nature? Or are you a partner of nature? Humans and nature share the planet in relationship and are equal entities. Are you that? Or are you part of nature? That's the most eco-centric image. Being human is to be part of a greater system and process of nature. In other words, we are one. So what resonates? Are you one? Are we on top? Are, are we in charge of nature? Are we stewards of nature? Are we partners of nature? Or are we part of nature? And those actions, they echo actually in our surroundings and the whole world is one ecosystem. And that's quite essential to realize. We have as a sustainable inclusive business already for the last probably eight or nine years, an icon in our WhatsApp group, which is literally the one with the echo, which is round with everyone in a circle. And maybe you've seen it, the pyramid with all living beings where humans are on top, which we call a ho, ego. Um, then the ego on top has a lot to do with the Western world view. Um, and the funny or historical detail about it is that it actually comes from philosopher Aristoteles, who actually classified and ranked living things. And that placed humans on top, which has later been translated into that nature is a pure resource to us. And that's also created the view that human livings, human, humans and other living things do not share the same soul. We have different souls. So it's, it's an, a philosophy that we have adopted and that also Christianity has adopted in a way that we are superior to other living beings. Um, now, and if we look from that viewpoint, and we do think that our economy is a just system and for the economy to keep running, um, we need to keep growing and growth is the holy grail. And we are all part of that system that we call our economy. Then if we do that and we want to change, we're very likely to just patch up the old system because we don't want to let go of that, what is actually our system currently. And the challenge that we're facing today is actually if you want to change, you have to transform 
It's not a transition. It's not patching up. It's actually a transformation um, that requires a different mindset. And that word we've used before, but I like to make it more clear on the mindset comes from where you sit. Where do you stand? What's your view? And who do you think you are? Who do you think we are? So in Africa, um, sustainability and a world without waste, a circular society was not so long ago very normal. It was the norm. Traditional uh, knowledge, living in harmony with nature, using resources, resources wisely and regenerative was normal. And maybe a bit longer in the West it was as well. So what we truly need is to rethink who we are and then what do we do and how do we do it and why do we do it? Are those the right choices? For example, our food system is actually a major concept where people invented that wheat occurs in every type of cereal. It's just a concept. You can also eat roots or sweet potatoes. So it leads to mass production and a mass demand on a single crop, which is wheat. While if you look at the indigenous food, which is feeding um, indigenous um, uh, people and communities, um, you can actually do that very sustainably. And if we use that knowledge, even to actually go back into those traditional knowledge and do cross cropping, most often, if we do that in the right way, we don't need um, pesticides, fertilizers. There's an organic system that is just there for us. And one food scientist told um, uh, in, a, in a talk once that if we are clever and mixing two crops like wheat and peas, you actually can produce a byproduct that will, re will remove the whole syrup, sugar syrup sector. So that would be enough. You don't have to create a sugar industry anymore. So if we use that, and that's going back in the past, how do you build uh, natural uh, buildings that actually have a natural climate system, climate control system? Uh, why is the Colosseum in Rome still standing? It was because they thought the cement was poorly made, or they thought they couldn't make smooth cement. But now they know that there's limestone inside that actually really moves nicely with the natural environment. So those designs were made to last and nothing was actually created to throw away and replace. Now, despite what we don't see, I don't want to be too negative. Um, I'm very excited today of what we do see. And what I want to really stress is that what we do see is actually beyond what can we do with the waste and converting the waste. It starts before. It is a process of looking at resources where nothing goes to waste. And I think that is a very positive development that we are having. We're not only trying to clean up what we dispose, but we're actually in the beginning process looking at um, uh, how we produce and avoiding waste in the first place. So um, we have amazing examples here, Expo, uh, black soldier fly as an alternative animal feed, uh, pet food, nutritious soil and compost, sustainable uh, produce and a grocery platform. We have organic waste to leather and textile. We have solar powered freezers. We have permaculture, health products, biochar, fish waste to fuels, natural water solutions, e-waste, um, and many more examples that are great um, in bringing natural and traditional knowledge and technology together for the future that we need today. So for today's, um, I like to invite you for the following. We will have a lot of exploring uh, and searching discussions to reshape our future. Um, and for that, we really need compassion and an open mindset together um, and look into how we can uh, transform. Now, what I like you to do is in all your discussions, Imagine or literally invite, have one seat for nature, allocate one seat for nature, for the voice of nature, as nature has no rights, one seat for the ancestral knowledge, and one seat for the seventh generation beyond us. And try and include those elements in your conversation and see then who we are why we are and where we're going. 
I hope you have an amazing day and thank you all for being here.